high school. You're really projecting okay. how you think he hits your door already, huh? Holy name. Okay. Where'd you go to high school? Before? I went to Skyline. Sky oh, yeah. I went to My Bret Hart. Yeah. I went to. Um, he went to Dewey. Yeah, he went to either. Continuation he School, know, basically. Right? Some of that, I did. <laughs> Basically, I still got my picture on that Fremont. shit too. Okay. Picture on the wall, me slobbering. Interesting. I wasn't allowed yeah. to go to public school, so I would you fight. You weren't it. allowed? Actually, no. I went to Catholic school. Because my, my mom taught, actually, at Oakland Oh, uh, this schools. story's boring. Let's move on. I think it's a Thanks. great story, actually. It's really not. It's the worst story ever told. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. Well, it's Merc80.com. I am in the house with Corey and Fatima. Core Fat Productions. How are y'all yep. doing today? Hello. Me, 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 me. What's up, people? Yeah, We're yeah. good, thank you. Uh, you may also recognize Corey uh, as the rapper extraordinaire Sunspot Jones. We'll probably touch Legend. on that a little bit. Yeah. So, first question to get right into it is, in your own words, let's start left to right. Uh, in your Stage own... Right. Oh, ladies first. Okay, that's there true. You go. That Never mind. Go. Oh, ladies oh. first. Uh, first question is, in your own words, what is your story and how did you fall in love with what you do? My story is that growing up in Oakland and the Bay, there were a lot of references, cult there was a lot of culture. And my mom was heavy into culture. You know, we go to ballet stuff, we go to music. Uh, we, I remember we went to see Pavarotti in the park, and my mom started getting into uh, foreign film because she was taking a class at UC Berkeley. So she would take me with her, and I started being exposed to um, De Sica. I remember seeing Bicycle Thief, and that was really a changing moment for me. I remember getting just caught up in stories, and I saw um, Fanny and Alexander, which is Igmar Bergman. And I had never seen movies like this. And then we would see, also my mom took me to see Porgies and you know, slapstick comedy. Porgies? Porgies? Yeah, yeah. That's my mom not, took that's me, true. we didn't quite know what it was. I knew what that was, that was that late night, get it, y'all. <laughs> but, um, and just, you know, all kinds of different genres of film. And I started, I remembered the high that I got. Your mama took you to go see Porky's? I know. Like, that is I know, we both thing. were like, okay, don't tell anybody, it's a secret. She didn't know, but you know what? I was, she knew I had the maturity, unlike other people who were main nameless. Um, but nice. I just fell in love with movies from that. And I remember that time in my life. And I, so that's how I started falling in love with film. And then I, you know, came down to LA, went to UCLA, went to film school, and, uh, you know, started directing. Started directing music videos when I was in school. Uh, got my first job. And I just was in love with the moving image. And, and then later became very interested in story. So that, that's my kind of, that's my story, if you will. Corey, how about you, sir? What was the question again? I just dozed off. <laughs> Basically, I snuck into the movies a lot as a kid. And Me like, too, Grand Lake Theater. I just had time, to get that in time, there, sorry. My time, I lived two blocks time. from the Grand Lake Theater in Oakland Chain and I hang. used to sneak in. Chain hang. That was the other thing. Chain hang. Sorry. Chain hang. Alright. What was I talking about? Uh, living in the... Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. So, Man, I used to watch Live in Color. Wait, nah, nah, nah. Oh, the movies. I used to go to the movies. So basically, as a kid, I was an only child. I didn't have really anyone ever to talk to because my mom lived upstairs, I lived downstairs. And so I would spend a lot of the time, you know, reading books while well, I was on punishment. So the only things I could do was, you know, read books. I couldn't watch TV. But when I could watch TV, I was really like, I was taken into that world. I was always in that world of just imagination because that was, you know, my brother or sister in a sense. So when I went to school, I went to Berkeley High ninth grade and um, I actually failed because all I did was just cut school and go to the movies. I've just always been about imagination, creating stuff. So from there I started writing, I would do little comics, I did an underground newspaper, I, I made songs, I wrote songs, I performed, I did stand up comedy when I first started. and. Uh, I just wanted to be in the world of entertainment and imagination. So this is kind of my journey to this right now. That's why you see me doing a lot of different things. I have a lot of different talents, not to just, you know, say a lot about myself and my talents, but the talents do exist. 
I come to your house, I'll cook better than your mama. I come to your house, I clean up anything better than your sister. And, and I come to your house, I fix your car because your daddy don't know how to get under the hood. I got talents, man. Open. I mean, the Bay is just great because everything is so close to each other. So you did have access where you're not as isolated like you know, unfortunately in LA, you know, if you live in South Central, getting to Westwood or getting to some place where there's going to be more, you know, opportunities for that kind of filmmaking or music, it's just not, it's a little harder geographically. Whereas, you know, the Bay, you have the transportation, you have all that stuff that, so it's all kind of within your reach. I mean, it's changed now because of the internet, mm -hmm. great blogs like, you know, Mark 80. You know, so that's that's what's dope. But I'm I feel so blessed that we came up in that world where, um, you know, everybody on my block too was different. You know, I had someone who's Latina, I had someone who's Asian, um, Filipino, you know, Vietnamese. It's you know, but we were all still so all those references and you know all that culture and music and film and art was just streaming kind of around right. us. You know even though it's still being in a very kind of black experience, so. Definitely, because you know, the Black Panthers are coming straight out of the Bay, and <laughs> yeah. honestly, coming from East Oakland, they were a strong influence as well, you know, and just the movies they made that were just political films, all the people that just made movies inspired by them, these are kind of like day-by-day -day situation understandings of how black society was in, you know, East Oakland by the mall or by, you know, just different places that didn't get as much exposure in the Bay at the time. So, you know, there's a lot of different writers, like from the Uhuru House um, down to, like, you know, Elaine Brent. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a mm -hmm. lot of just different people that, you know, are just hidden gems in the Bay that just influenced and inspired our whole mentality to where we could even do this today and, and smile sometimes and cry sometimes and just have a new understanding every time you think about something in a different way.